everybody and welcome to another episode of From What I Gather, where today, after another highly successful salmon fishing trip, I'm putting together my recipe for hot smoked salmon. It's real easy to do and it tastes great and I guarantee you everyone's going to love it. So let's get started. Oh, I got a couple of different types of salmon out there the other day. You got your coho or silver and this meat is a little more orange and a little more lean. And then you got your king or chinook and this is a nice fatty salmon that really, really tastes good smoked. Actually, these are both dead fresh out of the salt water. They're both going to be incredible. So the first thing I'm going to do is debone these and cut them into the size that I want to smoke. I'm going to cut my salmon into some kind of smallish pieces. These are maybe two by two squares here and this is about an inch thick on the Chinook. This uh, coho maybe two by three and a three quarter of an inch thick so it's similar in size. And I'm going to do this because even though a whole smoked fillet is beautiful but with these smaller chunks they're nicer to give away as gifts and I get smoke on more surfaces than an entire fillet. I get smoke around all the edges in the surface rather than just across the surface in one edge after I cut that fillet up. So they also cook a little quicker and that's a bonus for me too. I'm going to put together the brine now and this is the most basic brine that I use. I use a lot of different brines but this one's very easy and I still use it like this a lot. But once you got enough salt in there to cure your fish then you can get really creative with the other flavorings and make something that's unique to you and that you're gonna love. But for my basic brine, I'm gonna start with one gallon of ice cold water. There's even a little ice left floating around in there. And I'm gonna add one half cup of plain salt, two cups of white sugar, or one cup white sugar, one cup brown sugar is also very good and a half a cup of soy sauce for that. Ooh, mommy. And that's it. I just need to stir this thoroughly until all of those ingredients are completely dissolved. And then I put in my fish. That looks like everything's dissolved and I'll give that a quick taste. That's just about right for me. It's a strong brine. But that's because the fish is fairly thick and I want to make sure it penetrates all the way through. A quick note that if you're using sea salt or kosher salt with a bigger grain than just the plain table salt that I was using, add an extra tablespoon to make up for the difference in weight between the two. There we go. This is all ice cold still, ice cold fish, ice cold brine. Another thing that I do sometimes is to put a little weight on there to make sure that that fish stays completely submerged throughout the brining. And now this is going to go out into the refrigerator for 36 hours before we move on to the next step. My brining's done and now I'm going to take this over to the sink, pour out the brine, and then I'm going to cover the fish with fresh clean water, then pour that off to rinse the fish. Just a quick rinse will do and now this salmon is cured and ready to dry before smoking. The first thing I'll do is take it from here and just using some paper towels or a clean kitchen cloth, pat it dry and set it down on my rack. Now I've got my salmon all patted dry and laid out on the racks, a real small batch, just a couple of racks. I just want to make sure they're all kind of spaced out so they get smoked all around. And now I need to dry them further and there's a couple of ways to do it. I'm going to go ahead and put these in the refrigerator in a single layer for about a day. But if it was cooler weather, I'd just put them onto the smoker racks and turn a fan on them for a few hours until the surface gets kind of, kind of dry but kind of sticky too. This is also the time when if you want to crush some black pepper, some red pepper, some kind of topping on there, you can do it now and as it dries it'll really stick to the fish nice. But I'm going to keep this plain and straightforward. So this is going out into the fridge for another day. Now I've been using these little electric smokers to do salmon for my whole life. They do a real good job of it. When it comes up to temp it'll run at a constant 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And of course you do want to preheat it, but when you drop your fish in there it's going to lower the temp again and it's going to take a little while to come back up to temp. 
So I really use this for small batch stuff because when I jam it full of fish, it takes a very long time to get back up to temperature and that could have a negative effect on the, the quality of the fish that I get out of there. I'm gonna run one pan full of these alder pellets and that's gonna give me about four hours worth of smoke, which is just about how I like my salmon. I'll give it the four hours of smoke and then I'll let it continue to cook in there for another two or three hours until it gets to be the texture that I like. All right, my salmon's all dried and ready to go into the smoker. Not completely dried, it's a little tacky, but you see that real shiny sheen on there, and that's gonna make it real pretty when it's done. Uh, if I was gonna make a little salmon candy right now, I'd sprinkle a tiny bit of brown sugar over these pieces, and that would make a nice glaze, but we're gonna keep things just as they are for this batch, and it's a real small batch, so I'm just gonna use my little electric smoker. It's preheated. I'm going to throw this salmon in here and get some alder chips going, or alder pellets because they burn longer, and we're going to head out and get a bunch of crawdads for dinner while this is cooking. It should take about six hours in here. I got 21 in one last Well, you might be able to top that this year. The E. Welker special setup, crawdad net, hand knit, hand <laughs> stitched from select baling. <laughs> Look at this group. <laughs> Crawdad and his Crawdad and his Crawdad sack. <laughs> wow, there's some good ones, you guys. I know, there's some big ones. There we go. Oh, that looks pretty good. It took uh, seven hours. I'll just give that a little. I could tell by the firmness that it's ready, so I'm just gonna turn this off and let it all cool down. Now let's take a look at how we did. You'll notice that real shiny coating on there. This is not wet, it looks kind of wet, but that shiny coating is called a pellicle. And that develops when you dry your salmon in the refrigerator or in front of a fan and get it nice and tacky before it goes into the smoker. It's also going to help the smoke adhere to the meat. Let's try a piece of our Chinook. Now that's a nice and fatty one. It's lighter in color than the coho, but boy, oh, that is <laughs> juicy. Mm. It's just the right amount of sweet and salty for me. I don't like it super sweet. And the smokiness is just right. Now let's see how we did with the coho. Oh, there it is. It's that red, red meat in the coho. This one's also pretty nice and fatty, right out of the ocean. Oh, it's outstanding. There you can see the difference between the two. The coho is a little leaner and a little redder. And the Chinook's a little lighter and a little fattier. And they are both excellent mm. well I hope you try this and I really know you're gonna love it and if you do please like and subscribe for more thanks for watching